I have a question. Apparently, Black Ops 6 requires online at all times. I'm glad you bring that up because today, to start things out, we are going to watch Mr. Raffle Waffle's video uh, on, uh, it's called, This Could Be Bad for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And um, I, I don't, I know it goes into depth about the always online thing and specifically the problem it causes for uh, zombies. But I, I was very just, I, I've only watched maybe the first minute of this video and I'm like, we should watch this on stream. It's 32 minutes long. So it's going to be a long watch, but we're going to watch the whole thing. And uh, I'll give you my take on it as we go through here. So I'm sure it's a good one. They always are with him. So let's do it. Personally, don't think Mason is dead. That this, this, I'm just telling you what they told us and then gave you like the story behind it in yesterday's video. I got so many comments saying, I don't think he's dead. I'm, I'm with you until we hear something in game. I don't think anything's canon until it happens in game facing Black Ops right. 6, which you need to be aware of, and they've kind of been swept under the rug so far, so I'm going to use this whiteboard to explain exactly Love what the whiteboard. To dig into Someone commented on my video yesterday, I mean, like, Mr. Raffle Waffle's got a whiteboard, Ink Slasher's got an evidence board, we're in a good place. I agree. I, I strongly agree. To the first one, which is pretty terrifying, we need to go back in time. When Black Ops 4 came out, I'm sure you'll all remember the blue screen oh, issues yes. that were affecting I remember affecting Noah's consoles video that went like completely viral. You would load into a game and it could be a game of Blackout or it could be a game of zombies and your console would just end up crashing. And in zombies, that would mean that you would lose maybe... This I don't think will be a problem on console but I do think it may be a problem on PC. I think they've ironed out the issues with the consoles enough where this shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you might get a crash once in a blue moon, but on PC, this has me more worried. Half an hour or an hour or an hour and a half of progress in that match. This was very frustrating, but crucially for this video, that wasn't actually a console specific issue. It affected PC as well. This crashing that was happening kind of had two separate sources. One was the instability of the EXE itself, which is the same. So that was essentially the game not being finished, to keep that simple. The thing that console was suffering from, but there was actually a second issue on PC. You see, Black Ops 4 introduced a requirement that all the players playing zombies, for example, at any time, whether you were in solo or co-op, had to be connected to the internet. If you did Before he goes any further, I believe it is confirmed that for Call of Duty Black Ops 6, for everything but campaign, we will have to be online at all times. I believe that has been stated, it's been said, um, everything but campaign didn't have a connection to their server, you couldn't play. This mandatory connection was a really right. big problem. The online, but the only online, it's not for servers, it's for graphics, it's called on-demand textures. Okay, sure, sure but still always online. For the community, and it still is to this day, because if you're a high round player, for example, and your internet fluctuates while you're in the middle of an A- Rickson, I'm not sure what you're talking about the show. When does the show start? Uh, but you, when we were offline, subscribed for six months ongoing. So you're a legend. The hour world record attempt, Sorry, you lose access to your match. You can't yeah, that's play it insane. locally. And this was just the beginning of internet connectivity being a problem for people playing Call of Duty, especially zombies players. In Vanguard Zombies, Treyarch had to migrate to a new engine. They, they did say that internet connection might be needed at all times for text streaming. Well, I can guarantee you it will be needed for multiplayer, obviously. It will be needed for Warzone, obviously. And I'm guessing zombies as well. Um, now... There's a couple things take their old I'm assuming he's going to touch on, on the that are really important and map them over like to fit pause, inside uh, this sledgehammer-led Call of Duty. What that meant is that various networking features that Treyarch had built over the years, such as being able to pause the game in a solo match. The other thing, and I don't think people are realizing this, is say, for example, they take this back and they go, OK, the game doesn't have to always be online. Now, on-demand texture streaming allows the game file size to actually be smaller because if they didn't do that, they, they you'd have to download all of these textures, which could be very, very large. So you have a group of people complaining, oh, the game is too large. And then you have a group of people complaining, oh, the game always has to be online. Which would you prefer? Like, I, I, I don't know. Were not available in Vanguard. You're gonna show someone dying? Oh, what? 
Now, for those of you with amazing memories, you may remember that in Advanced Warfare Zombies, when Sledgehammer were developing that mode, they also didn't ago. have a solo pause in the game to begin with. The Sledgehammer game didn't really have the excuse that the Treyarch team had with Vanguard Zombies, but still, there was a lack of care and attention being paid to the solo experience. And to Which be clear, is so also, important. by this so, point, so important. We've talked about pause this before. had been introduced in Zombies. This was I've said it before, if you want a game to be successful, the game has to be just just as viable as a solo person as it is as a group. It was something that I've we had kind of that. started to Any take game. for granted. And so when Vanguard started going even further with these anti kind of player... Actually, one of the problems I had with DMZ is that it was so much easier in a group and they, there was no solo queue. Features like anti-quality of life, like kicking you for being AFK, even just for a period of about 30 seconds. And this has happened to me multiple times on live stream when playing Vanguard Zombies. And that's crazy to say because I've only streamed Vanguard Zombies a handful of times and it's still happened multiple times. But you could AFK for 30 seconds in that game and it could kick you, or at least it used to do when it had a play count of more than seven. And that's crazy, <laughs> right? The idea that you could just stand still in Zombies waiting for a round to change and then be booted for inactivity should never be a thing, and yet, in Vanguard Zombies, it was. So a slightly different problem to what was seen in Black Ops 4, but a problem nonetheless, and an erosion of care and attention, like I said, for the solo experience. In Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, everything changed. First of all, the entire Modern Warfare 3 Zombies- Watch this video yesterday, and it felt like a whole lot of ifs. Like, what if this happened? Mode well, I haven't got to that only. yet. You cannot play it without an internet connection, similar to Black Ops 4, except in Black Ops 4, this was a PC specific rule, I guess. Whereas in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, it's for everybody, console and PC, you have to be online. This means there is literally no solo experience for Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. It is an impossible mode. Yeah, it's to a play different solo mode, though. It's a different no mode. No matter what, you're only going to start a match if I do it's wish match they had made solo. you with other players and filled up your lobby. This also means that even if you were trying to play local, for instance, like imagine you were just on the couch with buddies and you wanted to play zombies, you can't. That experience does not exist. This means that you you are entirely dependent on the servers. And if, for example, the servers are being crashed by other players who are doing sentry duplication glitches and things like that, then your experience is completely blown to smithereens and there is no way around that. You can't just say, oh, people are doing this one dupe glitch right now. It's a weekend. Treyarch aren't like super on it with patching it currently. And so I'll just play a local game and I won't have to worry about the servers going down. You can't do that because this is like at the beginning of Modern Warfare Zombies when everyone was doing the sentry gun duplication glitch. Uh, you couldn't get away from it. And like you couldn't queue solo. So like that's a problem. You have to play with those other people. They can Servers ruin your experience your daddy. if there's an issue in the game <laughs> I don't know like if you guys that. And see Modern Warfare 3 has its own <laughs> continued issues that I could go on a tangent about with regard to how other players can negatively impact that solo player experience. Like if everyone always floods into tier three, then most likely that solo player is not yep, going to be able to always exactly. get the contracts that they want and stuff like that. They're just going to be or doing the warlords or anything like that. That's a topic for another day. Leave a comment if you want more whiteboard videos like this in the future, maybe. But I want to stay on task here. All of these things bring us to the first problem that Black Ops 6 is facing. I remember there are two in the video here, and the second one ain't great either. I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but Black Ops 6 requires oh. a continuous internet connection at all times to play any mode. That includes campaign. Okay. Now, this has a... Ver I've heard the opposite of this. Well, not the opposite. I've heard campaign, you're fine. You can ca play campaign offline. Variety but of maybe I'm really wrong. negative connotations, some of which we haven't even... Uh, actually, this is from the website. To deliver the highest quality visuals while also reducing the game's overall storage space. So this is what I was talking about. On your hard drive, Black Ops 6 will use texture streaming across all game modes. This means that you'll need continuous internet connection to play any game mode, including campaign. Okay, I was wrong. We've begun to get into here. But first, let's talk about why this might actually be the case. Because there are some positives to this as well, which you might be kind of surprised by. So let's start with some of those potential positives. Potential being a very carefully, cautiously used word here. The first possible positive impact is the idea that this will actually mean the visuals of the game are better. That one I don't know about, but the one that he's about to talk about, the file size, the 310 gigabytes is not the actual file size of Black Ops 6. That is the file size of Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, all of the um, language packs and everything. 
So you're looking at like probably like 100 gigs for Black Ops 6. Still big, but not 300. Now, please be skeptical of this one because this is Treyarch and Activision's argument. So you really can't take it at face value. But they have this issue, and it is an issue, that the game's estimated file size right now, all things considered, all things included in the COD app, is 310 gigabytes. It's bonkers. And so they obviously want to try and reduce that. And one of the things that being online allows them to do is a texture stream textures. You say it's it says texture streaming. It's not server connection. Yes, but you need to be connected to the servers to have texture streaming to your console dependent on your internet speed. And so you can achieve these high quality visuals while having lower on disk file sizes, like on your actual hard drive, because that data is just coming in over your internet. It's texture streaming, which we saw really being leaned into from sort of like Black Ops 3, I guess, onwards, maybe. I'm sure a dev can reach it's out to It's gotten heavier and heavier. And correct me if I got that one wrong. But texture streaming was a really big thing in Black Ops 3. Maybe that was just a local client side texture streaming thing so that they didn't have to have- Yeah, I think- Honestly, texture streaming only got really big after Cold War because like uh, Ermac just said, Cold War by itself is 200 gigs. So after that, people were like, okay, we need to lower the file size. Are those assets in the RAM at a given time? Not sure. Regardless, they're trying to sort of argue that, yeah, the game is going to look really crispy because we can make use of your internet so that you don't have a thousand gigabyte file on your hard drive. Instead, you can just temporarily download that and then display it in the game and it will be all fancy and nice. The second thing is something that I think we as a community probably haven't considered quite as much because this is something that is a little less obvious, I think, and that's server compute. So what I mean by this is that on a given day, booting up your console, it has a certain amount of power for what it can render in front of you and all of the calculations it oh, needs to do to make the game work. And that amount of power is finite. The client side, that's the side which- What he's saying here is the PS5 came out, what is it, five, six years ago? The console is only so good. They're using this stuff to make games better than they should be able to be on- PlayStation and Xbox. Your console is on. Computing power is limited to what your console can do. Now, if you look at, for example, a Modern Warfare 3 Zombies situation, there is simply too much going on in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies for one Xbox or one PlayStation to calculate and put together and render and serve to the player all in one go. It is too complex. And as a result, they need something else to take some of that kind of thinking away from your console. And so they push that onto the server side instead. And so in Modern Warfare 3, part of the reason it's- online No, no, you don't understand. You said they should make, make it current gen only then? No, current gen isn't good enough to do that stuff either. Like consoles are not good enough and most PCs aren't good enough to do that. Like you have to understand that. Like that's how big of a technology this is. Without this technology, they can't do the things with the games that they do. And only is that the server itself is doing a whole load of thinking to be able to construct the game experience that you're being delivered. So the number of AI on the map, for example, holding all of that stuff in memory, holding in memory all of the things that each of those AI are doing, holding all the players in memory as well, being able to make sure that the networking is all sorted. Like all of those things need to be thought about by a computer somewhere in the picture. And it's the server that is doing much of that Which thinking in the modern Warfare 3. I'm obviously simplifying language here a huge amount, but I'm doing it to just try and improve clarity. I'm a no-nonsense kind of guy. So in <laughs> Black Ops 6, if we take what's possible in Modern Warfare 3 zombies in terms of scale, right, with 20 people running around a server or whatever the number is, I actually forget right now, and the size of the map as well, it's an enormous map, and the amount of AI that you can have on that map, and the bosses that are on that map at the same time, and all of those things, right? You take all of the scale and the thinking power of that experience and you bring that into an experience which is four player only in Black Ops 6 and that means that there's that much more headroom for even bigger and crazier amounts of AI and sizes of AI and, and uh, sizes of maps and just more things in memory at a given time, complexity and detail and fun stuff. That's pretty exciting, right? So the reason I've got my blue pen out here and circled this one for server compute is that 
that's a genuine big benefit to the zombies experience. It's no longer limited True. by what's just on the console. And also, seeing as we know that this is going to be a backwards compatible game, it's also not going to be as limited by the last generation of consoles because, again, they can take some of the kind of load away from the console itself and put it on the server. So that's a good thing. The problem is that with that comes all of the issues that I talked about here and more that we'll get into in a second. Now, by no means do I want to come across here as being the guy that is just shilling for bad things being introduced in Call of Duty. After all, I'm the creator that doesn't get invited to anything. So I, I hope, know. I hope that Milo goes in here and explains um, a solution for it because I don't see one. Like, I really don't. No incentive to we'll do get that. To that in so a let's talk negatives real quick as well here, right? So, some cynical reasons why they might be doing this is quite simply that they want to squeeze more money out of your wallet. What the hell do I mean by that? Yeah, what in do you Black mean by Ops that? In Black Ops 3 Zombies, the Gobblegum system was introduced for the first time, and in that game, you could dashboard just before your match ended, and the Gobblegums that you used in that match would stay in your inventory. Like, they wouldn't be used up. This was actually a really big part of the Black Ops 3 Zombies experience. Like, I think pretty much all the players that have ever played Black Ops 3 have dashboarded in some way to save their gobbles at some time. Like, it's part of our culture in a very strange way. And I think Black Ops 3 Zombies would have felt very different if dashboarding wasn't a thing. But nowadays, with the path that we've gone on towards always online connectivity, suddenly they can update the server as you use these power-ups, these gobblegums or what have you. So, so yeah, I'm skeptical about the gobblegum system as well, how egregious it'll be monetization-wise. Um, but... That they can keep track of we what you have used yet. and what you haven't and so there's a lot more room for them to say oh you tried to dashboard to save your little gobblegums that you used in this black ops 6 match because gobblegums are coming back remember so the same system is going to be there but now they have this uh, strangely they useful they are feature earnable. to yeah. stop dashboarding and force so, you to let me play devil's advocate to what milo is saying here um in black ops 3 zombies Treyarch came up with an experience with gobblegums that they wanted people to experience in a certain way. And using your gobblegums up and not and losing them was what they wanted to do. And yes, that was partially for monetization, but it's also a feedback loop of the game. So you couldn't just use the same gobblegums over and over and over again. And doing that dashboarding takes away from that, that kind of system. It's the same thing in Modern Warfare Zombies if uh, you could just use your dog bone every single game the next game you went into wouldn't be a little bit different so i'm okay with like the cooldowns and stuff that they have in modern warfare zombies i still think they should be better shorter and you be able to reduce them more like you should be able to go into a game use your dog bone do something crazy come out go into the next game and be like i have to play this next game like this to reduce my cooldown so that i can use my dog bone the game after that I, I, maybe I'm not making any sense, but... Burn through your gobblegums more and therefore force you to spend more COD points on buying more gobblegums and giving more money to Activision. And this one's a complex one, right? Because on the one hand, you could say, oh, Milo, you're just being too cynical here. And like, there'll still be ways to dashboard, first of all. Like, people will still figure it out. Possible. But then also like surely this seems like a lot to do just to then try and squeeze more money out of microtransactions. But just think for a moment, over the last few years, how Call of Duty has changed in favor of microtransactions, right? You remember those pesky things called operators, which we all- Okay, I'm going to disagree with Milo on this. He was just talking about Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 is the most egregious game for microtransactions because the microtransactions were slot machines. They were supply drops. They were much worse than at least now when you buy something, you know what you're getting. So yeah, there's a lot of microtransactions and yes, gobble gums will probably be in bundles, but in comparison to supply drops, worlds of difference. All hate and we all wish weren't in the game and which we're finally moving away from in Black Ops 6, at least partially. That system is entirely there to squeeze more money out of your pocket. They directly said this is a worse gameplay experience. This is worse for the narrative. It is worse for zombies as... Okay, again, normally I agree with everything on Milo, but okay, the game's got to make money. They're going to make money. They're going to sell bundles. I don't buy bundles. I literally have not bought a single bundle in Modern Warfare 3. 
And if your gameplay experience is going to be worse by buying an operator and they're telling you that, isn't that them actually being nice and being like, dude, don't buy operators if you're playing zombies. Play as our main four operators. You're going to get more story. That's that's them doing the opposite of what Milo's saying, at least in my eyes. A mode, but we're just going to charge ahead and do it anyway, because ultimately we need money. And I get it. No, see, I, I totally disagree with this because at the same time, like, yeah, you can buy operators. It's going to make your gameplay experience better. But wouldn't you want to play how you want to play? If you don't care about the story and you want to play as Snoop Dogg, sure, I'm not going to. I want to hear the story. But what if you don't want the story? What if you want to play as Snoop Dogg? Maybe I'm a shill right now. Maybe. But I, I, I see it as the opposite of what he's saying. I see it as them giving more player freedom. But they're also telling you, yeah, go. And yeah, I actually. So that's where it changes, Scott. You said maybe there will be more zombie skins. This is where the issue comes in. If they add in zombie skins that actually give you more story and you have to buy them, that's a problem. Get it? They're a business on the one hand. But on the other hand, you're ruining that's not the what mode, doing making those right sorts now. of decisions and taking away from the experience instead of making it better. In my personal view, which maybe is naive, who knows, I would imagine that making the best possible mode and most fun possible zombies experience would be the best path to higher levels of monetization, rather than trying to force in features to over monetize when the mode itself was underbaked or needed more work. Like, I don't think these sorts of things should come at the expense of the experience. They what don't. operators absolutely did do, and so I don't think I'm being overly cynical to suggest that part of the reason that this might be the case is so that they can make another similar move to try and rinse the community. I think that that's a possible reason why. Now, there are yeah, other- so I, I think the opposite of him. He's saying that having operators in there that have nothing to do with the zombie story ruins the experience. I disagree. Choose the ones that are in the zombie story. Where I have an issue is if they add in operators that you have to pay for and you get extra story because of that. Then that ruins the experience and forces you to pay for it. That's my thought. Other reasons that I could get into for this red box here, but I think it's going to be more valuable for us to spend a moment just thinking about the actual implications that this has for zombies. So forced online connectivity with no local play makes me worry about several things. I'm going to list them out for you now. Number one, it worries me that there may be no pause in solo, at least if they rest. I think, I don't know this, I think they're going to have pause in co-op as well. I'm just guessing. They're trying to cover all their bases. I, I am guessing on they will. the laurels will. of, oh, we moved to know. a new engine and it was difficult to implement. They also said to us that they're not on a new engine. They're all, well, I guess technically, yeah, they did move to a new engine. They're on the, the Call of Duty engine, as they call it, which is the same as the Modern Warfare one, just heavily, heavily updated. Uh, but they've worked on it for four years. So uh, that's not These an excuse. These sorts of things. So sorry, we'll work on it or something, right? Just like we saw with Vanguard. I think that at this point, seeing as it's been a four year dev cycle, they had better have implemented those sorts of features. But still, the combination of all these things means that no pause in solo is a concern until they confirm that it's in. Number I see two, what you were saying, no Chad, pause about in the what ifs in this video. That would be an issue as well. I'd really like to see pausing in co op return. And all of these circumstances make me cynical about the likelihood of actually seeing that feature. Number three, I, I think it'll I be want there. Server stability. And I can't necessarily trust there to be server stability because even in a game like Black Ops 4, which wasn't trying to do all this crazy stuff with server-side insane computation to make the mode even bigger, right? It was a much more- That's my biggest concern, server stability. A simple zombies experience in that regard. Even so, we saw lag in Black Ops 4, and that meant that you might be in a high round attempt, and then you would lag for a second and you would die. And it would ruin your world record run, it would ruin your round 100 run, it would ruin your day. So server stability is a really important thing that I don't have confidence in really right now, because I can rely on my console doing stuff locally, but I can't necessarily rely on a server in the same way. Number four, what if they take the servers offline in five years? Like, what if they just drop server support? What if they do that? The okay, Milo's being actually really cynical here. They have not gotten rid of server support for Call of Duty World at War, the first game with zombies, which is, what, 15 years old? Why would they get rid of server for this game? Like, am I crazy here? Implications here are that Black Ops 6 Zombies is no longer playable Pod 3 still has servers, for anybody, I think Pod 2 anywhere, does too, I think. on any platform ever. Black Ops 6 Zombies basically has an end date built in because of the fact that it's online only. And that is criminal. That is absolutely...
Yes. He is right here. That eventually you will not be able to play this. But when is that going to be? Like he Bonkers. has a point. Let's put that into perspective. But there's going to be six people 20 years from now who want to play this game for a second right to this day maps like origins for example on black ops 2 are still having world records beaten over and over again new he's disproving his own point he's talking about black ops 2 and how the servers are still online speedrun times being set all those sorts of things but can you imagine if tomorrow origins stopped being playable just gone in that world there would be a final world record you wouldn't be able to try and beat it there'd be a final speed run time you'd have a final personal best and you just have to look back on that content and be like, oh yeah, that was good in the past. Similarly, if you get into zombies in the future or you get a friend into the zombies in the oh, future. Oh, he's saying it because Black Ops 2 can be played fully offline. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that actually makes sense. And you want to go back and play Origins? Sorry, bro. Yeah, Origins has been sunset. They've taken the servers down. You can't access it anymore. Can you imagine? Like that is... Insane. It is so insane. And so a world where internet connection is required at all times in a mode which really and truly should have a local version available is terrifying. Like I'm worried because I don't trust Activision for a second that in five years, six years, seven years or whatever, they're going to deprecate Black Ops 6. Okay, this is, this, that's where that comes in. 20 years from now, I'm with you, Milo. Five years from now, no chance. You can still play COD 3. Like this cannot be a Black Ops 3 level. They did They did kill Warzone 1, yes. But they're trying to have this continued experience with this. It wasn't its own game. And Warzone 1 was free to play. Golden era of zombies if it has an end date in this way. It just can't. And so the elephant in the room here that I've got jotted down in between these two points, because there's still some other issues we need to get into in just a second. That's the fact that all of this stuff needs to be addressed. So, so far, we've seen Kevin Drew, right, in the Black Ops 6 reveal stream, the Black Ops 6 Direct, sitting with a book next to him mm. that was quite literally titled, Thanks for the Feedback, the Science and Art of Receiving Feedback Well, Even When It's Off Base, Unfair, Poorly Delivered, and Frankly, You're Not in the Mood. There's like this a whole Easter egg with that, just a funny little, haha, we heard you, Round Based is coming back, we know that you really like Round Based, here it is. But within this, right, there is an implication that you are listening to feedback. And something I've been harping on about since Black Ops 4, when my connections with Activision originally bit the dust, because when the game came out, I was so vocal about the blue screen issues that were happening. I've been trying to, to convey this really important point that seems to have just very continuously fallen on deaf ears over and over and over again, which is the zombies comms, right? The way that Treyarch and Activision talk to the zombies community has really suffered since Jason left. And I'm not saying that Jason was a saint here. I'm not saying that Jason was the best thing since sliced bread. But what I am saying is that the way that he communicated... So you're, you're saying like, imagine 10 to 30 years from now, imagine Super Mario Bros. needed to be online to play. Um, I get what you're saying. And it's the same thing with the way video games are going right now, where uh, they're going like basically streamed, where you buy the service like Netflix, AKA Xbox um, Game Pass, and you don't actually own the games. If you stop paying for it, you don't have them anymore. Communicated with the community was pretty good. There was a lot to like there, and it really felt like there was a conversation happening between the fan and the devs and the fans and, and a fan and the, the, the game itself that we've lost since then. It's just been gone. And that's not me sort of being high and mighty and being like, boo, the new team or anything like that. That's purely me saying there has been a real shift in communications from yeah, the like old Spotify zombies music, yeah. to now. And this is okay, right? Activision is a lumbering Goliath of a company and it's difficult to have this scrappy upstart kind of off the record uh, black book kind of operation in the zombies department where they kind of don't play by the rules and do their own thing and play fast and loose. Like, I understand that that's going to be very hard to swing in a company the size of Activision and with as much on the line as they have. I get it. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like meaningful progress has really been made. It's felt like this has been a pain point, 
an elephant in the room for a really long time. And I'm not saying that this has to be solved at the snap of the fingers immediately. I'm not saying that we need Jason Blundell back. I'm not saying that Kevin Drew needs to become Jason Blundell. I'm just saying that the community is going to have anxieties around all of these things, right? And Kevin Drew, if you're listening and the book on your table about taking feedback is something that you're genuinely doing in earnest and you're really trying, then please heed what I'm saying here. I mean it only with goodwill. This is what your audience are worrying about currently. And you have two paths ahead of you. You can either address the feedback as you've voice already crack. started to do with round base coming back, which is good, right? Props for that. But you can continue in that direction and try and reassure people about these worrying things because I think that they're genuinely worrying. Or Treyarch can continue the very filtered, narrow, almost silent approach that they have with regards to the zombies community, which often doesn't feel like it's speaking the zombies community's language. It doesn't feel like it's personable for the zombies players specifically. It feels like it's written by ChatGPT almost for what that- I think what he is saying is, if you look at multiplayer in Call of Duty, uh, there's a lot of communications. Like there is um, patch notes that come out almost weekly, if not more. Uh, there's a lot of communication between it. Zombies, just the way that the community has always been, is tight-lipped like normally zombies isn't announced to like three weeks before the game's launch and then when it is they're quiet about the easter eggs they're quiet about what changes in it and everything like that and it's very different than that and he wants to see more communication there i think is what he's saying bot thinks a zombies fan is rather than being one of us and i think that the most likely path here is that the chat gpt not the best zombie support angle is what happens and that disappoints me because I've been harping on about this for so many years, right? To my own detriment as well. Like, it would be so much easier if I wasn't honest, seriously. <laughs> but those two paths exist. Like, it's not just the path of the narrower, silent, less communicative approach. There is a world where Treyarch recognizes internally there is a specific need here for the way that it communicates with the zombies community to shift just a little bit. And that could start with these sorts of worries being addressed. I think that this is the case for 90% honestly of the problems the zombies mode faces it's communication it comes down to that so frequently Very and i want to see it improve this. i think all of us in the community do drop me a like on the video if you agree with that now the other element here which i've still somehow not even gotten like the other like the thing here is that he's saying and i think what i agree with here is more communication with the developers is always better i think he could have just said that too god i've got a lot of zombies opinions my bad guys but the other thing goes in a completely different direction. Durries is one of the most loved zombies maps of all time. It's the go-to map when people ask me what my favorite map is. I say Durries. I even say the World at War version pretty frequently. It's just a classic. But did you know that Durries is actually a copy-pasted multiplayer map called Nightfire? It's true. Durries came out and there's an MP map called Nightfire where you can run around the exact same environment. It's just that different it doors the are open same? and things like that. So for example, where Quick Revive is in Durries, you can get out the back there. You can kind of run around the back of that building and there are no massive teleporters. So this was an instance of a zombies map coming out and it being repurposed assets and it being completely fine, right? Nobody cares. Duris is amazing. Similar situation. Ascension. Another similar situation. Five. There is a precedent for this being a thing in zombies and it being okay. However, changing to the red pen here, Vanguard basically spit in the face of the entire zombies community with yes. regard to this point. It said, I, I oh, think okay. Vanguard spit in the face of the zombies community in every point. Okay, but you're all right with us repurposing some assets here and there. Well, we're just going to do that for the entirety of the game. So you're going to be playing in multiplayer maps, basically. And then for the few areas which are zombies specific, we're going to actually re-release that same space as another DLC later in the year, just with a different color added, just a different tint. And we're going to pass it off as a new thing. It was, for lack of a better word, it was just laughable. Like all of us in the community were like, what, how? How do, how do they think, do they think we're this dumb, right? Like, how do they think they can get away with that? And 
To be absolutely clear and to be fair to the Treyarch team, they were working on borrowed time with Vanguard. They had very little time to develop the game. They were working on a tiny smidgen of their resourcing. Like, it was a challenging development cycle for Vanguard Zombies. Don't get me wrong. But the problem, ironically, I mean, it's not even ironic at this point because it always comes back to this and I've been yelling this for I'm so very many curious years what he says about Modern Warfare record. 3. The problem really was comms, right? They put this out there as being this a new take on the Zombies formula yeah. that was going to blow us all away. And I they actually really built it up to be the next level of zombies, right? We just had Cold War. Cold War was pretty damn good. And yeah. they were making out like Vanguard was going to be equally good, if not better. And then it was Vanguard. And we were all just like, are you serious? For real? God. So there was a there was a marketing problem, I think, with Vanguard. And that only served to amplify the problems that it was having. I think that we would have all been a bit more willing to sort of forgive it if they'd come out and said, yeah, this is just going to be a teeny tiny little taster just to kind of tide you guys over. Because Vanguard eventually did do round based, correct? I, am I crazy here? I'm pretty sure they eventually came out with round based. And um, if they would have said, we've got a zombies experience at launch. It's not round based. Yeah, it was like one map with season four. Okay. We're going to, we're working on. Yeah, that's right. It was Shinonuma. We're working on round based. It's not going to be ready for launch. We had a limited time to work on it, but there's going to be a zombies experience there, but it's going to be different. We think you'll like it. Like they still need to hype it up, right? I, I do agree well, that with they that. They did not say that. Then Modern Warfare 3 comes along. Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is set in Urzakstan, which is just a war zone map. And so there is zero environmental storytelling across that space. It's very boring. From a zombie's perspective, it doesn't feel like it has any atmosphere whatsoever. And again, I'm not being hyperbolic here. If you compare a map even like a dome. Okay. I'm going to get on Milo's side here, but in a different way. I completely agree with what he says, and I feel the same way about Warzone. Warzone no longer has any environmental storytelling. It did in Verdansk. When they were putting in Intel, when they were putting out cutscenes revolving around the area, you would go into an area and you'd be like, oh, I get it. This is where Frank Woods got into a fight with uh, Victor Zakaev. This is where the train left that was holding Khalid al-Assad. This is where this happened. This is where that happened. The stadium blows up. It's like, okay, Shadow Company moved into this area. There was actually story to go with it. And then they implemented Caldera. And then they, with no story with it, the story was garbage. There was no story. Let's just be honest. And then they introduced Al Mazra, and there was a little bit of storytelling, but you really had to search for it. And now we have Yurzikstan, and what's the story with it? Where the hell is Makarov? So it's not just zombies they're doing with those the big maps. It's the whole game as a whole. A Reese, which again, I said was repurposed, right? To something like an Urzikstan, except in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. It's just bland. There is no seasoning. It's completely flavorless. And that's because of the fact that it's a repurposed map. So then you might think, okay, well, they've got those Dark Ether bits, right? Where you can go in a portal and go into the Dark Ether. Almaza. Surely that's awesome. The problem is that even the Dark Ether bits, which are more customized and- So he's mad about the reused assets is what he's mad about. Well, based off of what we're seeing, there are multiplayer maps that are already in Liberty Falls. So he's not going to be happy with that. They do have some really cool elements to them. I want to be absolutely fair here. The skybox, for instance, I love, but the skybox is just a skybox. The map itself is just Al Mazra over and over again for every single one. It's just been Al Mazra, Al Mazra, Al Mazra, Al Mazra. No and the problem with this it? is, I constantly feel like the zombies canon, the lore, the story of the zombies mode is being funneled into much less interesting locales because of the fact that they've gone, oh, we have to have this be part of the wider Call of Duty cinematic universe that we're building because we desperately want to be Marvel. And by building that Call of Duty cinematic universe, that allows us to put soap in zombies as an operator and mm. sell more skins. And so all of the really bombastic, well, you didn't even have to buy fun soap, so. stuff that we had in the past, like for example, going to the moon, that feels like so much less likely a possible path these days. I because instead, 
everything has to come back to modern warfare realism. It has to be grounded in this way. Even the Cold War zombie story, which largely Cold War I thought was a good game, but the, the story itself really suffers from the fact that it's like a story about nukes. And don't get me wrong, nukes have been in zombies sort of for a while, but they've been nukes in the sense of what happens if you blow up the moon? Or what happens if you blow up- I actually uh, completely see what he's saying. Now, again, devil's advocate, I, I do agree with him here. Generally, if you look back at the history of zombies maps, the ones that launch with the games are the ones that are, um, how do I say this? The ones that are more realistic. I know that's weird to say about zombies, but like movie theater, um, like building, like we see with Noct, like they're they're real realistic and then as the dlc moves forward they get more and more unrealistic and you get the crazy stuff Earth itself and then we've seen the outcome of that like we've actually lived that sci-fi fantasy imagined future but the nukes that we're getting in cold war onwards are just the same things that we're seeing in warzone all the time which is like oh no not another global geopolitical threat i Really, I'm worried that the insert othered group here, such as the Russians or the Chinese or people from Uzbekistan, I guess, or whatever made up country they're going to go to next. I hope they don't get control of the nukes because they must be bad. Oh, wait a second. Here's a character from one of those factions who we get to like. And now we're conflicted. Like, it's. I see what he's saying, and that's one of the reasons why I think Cold War did this so well with their postseason story. Half of the story was, yes, Stitch is trying to brainwash the world. The other half was Stitch has kidnapped Adler and we are going after him. It was a more personal story. It wasn't a geopolitical, oh, there's going to be nukes there. It was, they have Russell Adler, we need to save Adler, which is way more emotional of a story than nukes might go off. So like, it's painful. I see what he's saying. It's painful because that is not the zombie story. The, the zombie story is meant to have the sci-fi fantasy weird element. It is meant to be there. The entire core premise from days gone by was this foundational, what if insert moment of history here actually happened a different way and it was a cover up, right? Even, okay, huge point here. Even with what they are doing now with Warzone or just did with the truth lies and those challenges where we're hunting for the mole and finding evidence is more story than Yurzikstan has had since launch. Like I'm not like, think about it for a second. Since the launch of Yurzikstan, they have had way more story in the last two weeks than they have had the entire year. And the same goes for Black Ops as well, to be clear, but it's so obvious in zombies to the point that when they rebooted the story with the chaos story in black ops 4 i mean it wasn't even a reboot they just did a new story they were so aware of the fact that the premise of zombies was a historical event that then went a different way but it was covered up by the media or what have you they understood that to such an extent that a map like a voyage of despair for instance right is quite literally a the Titanic, but with an alternate ending. Like they got it, they understood that. Nowadays, we're getting so many of these repurposed bland environments. It doesn't feel like it lets us live out that dream of figuring out what this alternate future, alternate history Completely thing Completely agree be. with what like, he's saying. Gorod Krovi, such a good example. Oh yeah, Battle of Stalingrad. Yeah, 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 cool. All right, historical event. Uh, dragons now? Okay, yeah. And so part of the reason for this is that's what Treyarch does. Like I have a video coming out today, uh, do I want to? I'll, I'll spoil it. Rakuta Prison is actually because, yeah, this this video will come out on my second channel after that video. Rakuta Prison is in Black Ops 6, like confirmed. And uh, I have a video going over what that means and how that could potentially fit in the story as well as Rakuta Prison is a real world place. Like, I don't think a lot of people know that. Rakuta is not a made up location. It is real. And that is what Treyarch does. And in fact, I think so much more of this campaign is going to be like that. And I have another video, I think, coming out on Friday, I think, might be, no, it's probably going to be, it's either Thursday or Friday, uh, and it's going to be called Adler's Dark Big Secret or something like that. It's 
more about real world events. Treyarch completely bases their stuff off of real world events and twists them. They do it with campaign. They do it with zombies, like Milo's saying. And with zombies, like actually campaign, now that I think about it, your job is to figure out, okay, what happened here? Did Alex Mason kill JFK? Sure, right? let's explore what that would have been like. So by uh, sucking the soul out of zombies in a big way, which is implicit when you suck out the environmental storytelling, you end up like with, they did with a Warzone. husk. And it's just nowhere near as fun. And this is why it sort of sucks when we just get facility map after facility map after facility map after facility map. They're That's all right. the same. It's all bland. So this brings us to Black Ops 6. 12 days ago, I posted a theory about one of the two zombies maps that I thought was going to be in BO6. I thought one was going to be an island, which we've seen in the trailer, and yeah. it all looks like new assets and stuff, so pretty big thumbs up there. Like, that's looking pretty good so far. Good. But it this second map, I was speculating to be based in Harper's Ferry or based on Harper's Ferry, like inspired by Harper's Ferry in real life, and for the map to be Liberty Falls. And I posted this whole He's rabbit right. hole theory on it, and I'll link it on screen right now so you can go and click through to that if you want to give it a watch. Now, what's What's interesting that? is that it seems like my theory has been kind of confirmed because in the Black Ops 6 Direct, we've already seen stuff in this fictional town of Liberty Falls. For example, this cop car is quite literally the Liberty Falls police. And so presumably this whole mall kind of area is also set in Liberty Falls. And so no huge issues here, right? Like we've seen multiplayer maps and zombies maps share the same kind of locales before and it's been fine. I'm glad you said that. Times where it's really not been fine. And so my fear is that part of the reason that that map has been chosen is pretty much purely because they were going to make a multiplayer map of it. And they were like, yeah, we can I don't think it, so. Right? And I, I don't think so. I think it's actually the other way around. I think they probably made the zombies map and are like, this section of the zombies map would make a good multiplayer map. And I could be wrong about that. It could go either yeah, way. Yeah. From a game dev perspective, you want to make good use of your resources. But at the same time, We've seen that have really bad implications. Now, to be clear... So, so put it this way. I don't know what he's going to say here. Put it this way. If they made Liberty Falls, made it for zombies, all of the story behind Liberty Falls is in regards to zombies. They take that map and put it into multiplayer. Then, he, like, the opposite of what he is saying. All of the lore on there is not multiplayer. It is zombies. I know the uh, counter argument here would be to say, oh, that probably just means that the zombies map isn't going to be Liberty Falls. And if that's the case, hell yeah. It is. It is. They told way. us that. Like, I look forward to being wrong in some ways. But at the same time, with leaks kind of acting as confluence too, here so. and stuff in the files and just in general, it does seem to be going in the Liberty Falls direction. So this may end up not being a problem. And that would be amazing. Like, I would love that. I don't want there to be issues, right? But still, going to flag it regardless, just so that we can kind of keep it in mind, because there's a wider point here that I think still stands about the way zombies has kind of been blended with some of the other modes over the years. Okay, back to the whiteboard. So even if Liberty Falls the zombies map is completely different to Liberty Falls the multiplayer map, and even if Liberty Falls is in the campaign as well and is still really different, as much as it's nice for my theory to sort of be confirmed by all this, the big but is that zombies is in dire need of feeling like it can break away from the multiplayer in the campaign and things like that, should it desire to. It needs to be able to do that. It needs to be uh, anti-COD. Like zombies, I really truly believe, should be anti-COD in its thesis, right? It should be counterculture to whatever COD is proposing. Zombies should almost feel like it's going the other way. That's how it has been since the beginning, and that's yeah, when it's worked what the best. And it's early days, so I will continue to make videos on this, and you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those. But the, 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 the way to summarize all this is as follows. Homogenization of zombies, multiplayer, campaign, and warzone is bad. It means that they can save- I disagree. I think homogenization is good to a certain extent. The use of the same weapons, the use of the same creator class, the use of leveling in both, the use of camos in both is good. When the story crosses over to a point where it hinders creativity is where the issue lies on resources, which is good. That is a positive, but it so frequently has come at the expense of the soul of the zombies mode. And so sure, I'm being a bit overprotective here, right? But I'm doing so because I don't want this to happen again. And it doesn't just go for the launch maps, okay? This goes for the DLC season. It goes for whatever they're going to be making in. Okay, video's pretty much done. I agree. Even like further with the point of Yurzikstan and Elmazra, I think what's bigger with Yurzikstan and Elmazra is there's just no story to begin with on them. Like there's no story in multi or not multiplayer in Warzone.
and there's no story in zombies. So it's like they just made this big empty space for you to play in. And I think that is a way bigger issue. I don't know if you can hear me because I'm talking away from the mic. A way bigger issue than people realize. Like it's, I said it before, one of the best things they did with Verdansk is the Intel missions. And when those are gone and there's no story being added via seasonal cutscenes, what do they have left? So, like, I agree with what Milo's saying there to an extent. Uh, with what he was saying about the more money from operators, I don't agree with. Always online. Uh, I guess we'll come back to that real quick. How do you fix it? Because you take away the always online, the game's worse. It just is. They, they can't make the game that they want because consoles can't do it. Like, it's just straight up. So, I don't know what the answer to that is. I really, really don't. Like, maybe, okay, yeah, this game's 100 gigs. Zombies you can download locally, but it's going to be an extra 100 gigs. And yeah, people would do it. I guess that is the only way they could technically do that. But then as they introduce updates and stuff, they would have to update the download for that. It would get bigger because the streaming textures are only going to get more advanced. So I don't really have a good solution for it. But I just know that if they want it to be locally played, the game is not going to be able to be as good as people want. So I don't know an answer, but it sucks. It sucks if the servers crash or if your internet crashes, you're kicked out of your game. It sucks. I, I'm with them on that, but I don't have an answer. But good video. I always like to hear uh, Milo always sounds like he's going through crazy conspiracy theories and breaking reality in his own world. And I, I like that about him. So uh, always a good watch. But yeah, let me know what you think.